Welcome into the Kiwi Football Fix. Thanks so much for your company. My name's Fred De Jong, sitting in for our good friend Goran Paladin today. And today on the show, we're talking all things All Whites. January window just around the corner, then leading into the Oceania qualifiers in March. And if all goes well for the All Whites, there is the Intercontinental Playoff in June. So to discuss all that and more, let's welcome in a, the All White assistant coach, Darren Baisley. Darren, welcome. Hey, Fred. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Good. Looking at the squad um, that's going to get announced on, on Friday, is firstly, is everyone available around the world? Well, it's, it's difficult at the moment. At this stage, um, we're probably going to release the squad later in the week. Uh, we're still going through some discussions with clubs and players around availabilities. And, uh, yeah, it's just difficult times at the moment with, with some players uh, going through some contractual stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll look to uh, announce the squad. You know, we're, we're looking to have a strong, you know, it will be a strong squad. We've got most of our main players. Uh, um, and there'll be for some new players to come back into the fold. So, uh, we welcome back some of the A-League players. So, we've got um, Tim Payne and... Um, Clayton Lewis will be called up, so they'll come back in from the Phoenix, which is great. Um, you know, Ollie, Ollie Say is injured at the moment, and, and some other players from the club that were close. But you know, we've, we've now got a lot of competition for place, and though we may have a few changes and a few players unavailable for this tour, you know, there's there's lots of um, options available to us. So, yeah, it's great. We'll bring bring back in some of those A-League players, which will be awesome for them. And I mean, there are so many players now around the world playing professionally. Must make the uh, must make the job of announcing a squad both exciting and a bit uh, a bit daunting. Yeah, we we were sort of going through our wider squad, and I think we're close to now fifty um, players playing professionally around the world. You know, which is which is awesome for New Zealand, um, and it, and it gives Danny a a, you know, a bit of a headache because he's you know liaise. You know, we monitor all of these players with their playing minutes you know every week and try to keep in uh, as close contact with as many of them as we can to see how they're going and how they're developing. And yeah, so Danny's got some tough. Tough to make. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll go as strong as we can, but it's you know it is good to at times give players opportunities to uh, come in and be part of it and show you know that they're you know that they should be in the in, you know, in the top squads when they get announced for hopefully the the bigger th stuff later in the year. I mean, assuming the squad's going to have a somewhat familiar look given the the recent two windows. Um, yeah. Any any major surprises that you can announce? Yeah, I, I mean, the, another one that will come back in is Logan Rogerson, um, which is great for him. He's not he's not been involved for a couple of years, but he's gone away, uh, working uh, his trade at FC Hacker in Finland and, and doing good. You had had, had him. to be FC Hacker, yeah. given the name. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, yeah. What other club yeah, did you choose? <laughs> yeah, it's as Kiwi as you, you can get. So he, he's doing really well over there, um, as a lot of other players are you know, around the world. Um, so it's a good opportunity for him. You know, a spot sort of opened up in, in that sort of position. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bring him in and um, you know, him again for for this tour and see how he, he goes. Which is, yeah, this, you know, there'll be some great opportunities for players, and, and we'll be we'll be strong, you know. And whatever whatever we squad we put together now is, um, you know, we'll do it. There's never going to be any excuses of this player's not available, that player's not available. You know, we're bringing in professional players from from clubs around the world and, and they'll be organised and, you know, they'll have the great work ethic and whatever players we bring together, that the culture that they have, mainly, mainly you know, done by the senior players and, and the players that are always around, you know, your Joe Bells and that, that are, you know, you're part of that cement now that fix everything together. You know, they'll always have that great, culture and spirit and bonding and, and that's that's been great to see that you know the last few tours really developing you know the culture within these players and squads and it's difficult because we forget a lot of these players haven't been back to New Zealand for for a long time if you look at Woodsy and Winston and you know they've been away from the country so having these um, tours and these games just just brings them back together you know allows them to reconnect with culture reconnect with the country um, and yeah, it's, it's great, awesome times. Just a couple of uh, names that uh, you'd expect on the list, of course. Winston Reid, what's the news with him? Because last time in the last window, yeah. you know, he was training on his own, was looking for a club. Um, where, where's he at? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's doing awesome. You know, he's obviously 
you know, he's now in Dubai. He's living in Dubai currently. And the last tour we had, you know, he came in. Um, we weren't sure he's going to be ready to play. Uh, and he looked as fit as we've seen him for a long time. You know, he's in a great space, um, training really hard, injury free, you know, happy. Um, and, and, you know, he came into training and, and, and asked to play. And when he played, he played really well. And, he, and you know, he was, he was great. Um, so it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, hopefully he'll now have a run of injury free training and playing. And, and, you know, he's looking to get back into a club so that he gets football. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, we, we hopefully we see, uh, you know, the Winston Reed that we all want to see. Yeah. Second one, Chris Wood, obviously. So the big news over the last week has been his transfer from Burnley to Newcastle. Um, does anything change with him um, and the Allweights? We know that you know, he loves playing for New Zealand. He's there every, every tour, you know, he's, um, which, which has been amazing. Um, does, that, does his availability just uh, change now? Well, no, I mean, he's, he's, I've never known Woodsy not turn up for a, uh, for a tour. You know, he's there all the time and, and he, he loves it. He loves yeah. coming in. He wants to score goals. He wants to break records. And, um, you know, it's such a proud Kiwi. Yeah. Like we talked about earlier, I think he's been away from New Zealand so long that these opportunities are, are, are great for him to reconnect with Kiwis and, you know, go back to, to you know, his growing up in this country and, and, and get away from probably that, the, the surroundings of the Premier League. Um, you know, which are, are going to be even bigger for him right now, having gone to Newcastle, which is obviously, you know, a massive club in, in a little bit of trouble at the moment. But um, I think it's a great move for him. You know, he could end up being a legend there if he scores goals and keeps them up. So, you know, he he's he, he always wants to be involved. He always wants to make himself available. You know, Daniel will liaise with the club and make sure that it's the right thing to do for all players, including Woodsy. You know, and there are times where we have previously, and, and we will in the future, you know, make a decision based on, you know, right now it's better for the player to be uh, um, with their club. For us in the long term, we, you know, we can end up with better players if they get contracts at these pro clubs and they're playing consistently. So, yeah, it's a bit of a juggle for, for Danny and, and the staff, making sure that, you know, we've got um, a strong squad, uh, a consistent squad. But also that we, you know, that we're liaising with the clubs and the players and making sure that it's it's right for them in the right moment. Yeah. Looking at the opponents in the January window, you've got uh, Jordan ranked 90, Uzbekistan ranked 84. Um, do you think? Well, just Uzbekistan, would that be the strongest team that um, the All Whites have played since probably the Republic of Ireland? Do you think? Um, I, I, I think so. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, all of the games are difficult. As, as you'd know, there's no easy games in international football. You know, every game, every game is different, and every game is difficult. And the, the one game that wasn't streamed live that when we played Algeria A, you know, was they were a really good team. That that team went went on and won the Arab Cup, you know, with the same squad that we played against. So they they were a really strong group, even though it was Algeria A. Um, you know, Bahrain was, was strong, but I think you're right. Uzbekistan, you know, they've um, They'll be strong. Funnily enough, Jordan, they played Jordan um, back in September, I think it was, and, and Jordan actually beat them. Um, yeah, but it was a that. game that was Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan probably dominated, really, and, and got under attack and caught on a set piece by Jordan. Uh, so Jordan, are, they're going to be a very difficult team. They're a very good, um, got a very good, good experience. They've played a lot of football, Jordan. They've, you know, I think they've played 10 games, 10 international games since uh, September, you know, one I think it's six of those games and, and, you know, got beat at the Arab Cup by Egypt. So they're, they're going to be a really strong, you know, it's going to be a really competitive game. You know, it's a, I think, I think you're right. It's a step up from our last games um, and the rankings, I suppose, show that, you know, they've got rankings of 84 and 89, I think, Jordan, or maybe 90, you know, we're, we're obviously still, still at a, a ranking that we, you know, we want to improve above a hundred, which, you know, we feel um, it's a bit harsh on us, but we haven't played enough games. So, so these are really important games, but they're going to be tough. You know, they're really tough games, as as all international games are. Uh, but I think you're right. This is it's going to be a step up and something that we need to be ready for. And um, yeah, I'm sure the the players will turn up for it. Yeah. The the beauty of this squad, though, I think, is over the last few windows, um, the expectation has gone up that I think the public now would look at this and go, "We expect to win." Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that's good. 
Um, you know, we we still have to make sure that the players understand that, you know, we won games and we got results through certain things that we did in those past tours. You know, we were we were compact. We were, you know, um, we, we played a certain style, but the players were fit and, and brave, and, you know, and they stuck together and, and played to the style of play, played to the system and, and got the rewards at the end of the day. So, you know, you can never just turn up and expect to win games. And, and that's the danger that we've now created, that we've, you know, we've won our last four, four games. Um, what is good is now that the players, are, uh, they feel like they have a winning habit. And they talked about that at the end. You know, Woodsy is talking about you know, this is the first time for a long time with New Zealand football, uh, with the All Whites, that, um, yeah, that we've got a winning habit, which is great, you know, and it does... Um, it does move on to the next tour and hopefully we can carry that through and, and keep winning games all the way through the year, uh, which would be awesome. So, but we've just got to make sure that we don't get too carried away. These are difficult games. Um, and like I say, we get our rewards through doing the things uh, you know, that we're good at. And, and that is the working hard and, and making sure that we're playing as a team, um, which, which, you know, the boys do anyway. Moving on to uh, OFC qualifiers <laughs> and, uh, Obviously, not an ideal scenario for the All Whites having to play some of those games outside the FIFA window, and um, yeah. and of course that means that uh, the clubs hold on can hold on to those players if, if required. Um, has any firstly has anything changed in that regard with um, with the tournament, and and then secondly, you know, are you are you confident that that uh, that that the this All White squad has the you know has the basically the firepower overcome that yeah i mean it's it's obviously not ideal um and it's something that's in the media that isn't um wouldn't really happen anywhere else in the world i don't think where you'd have a world cup qualifier outside a window so uh, i mean every single professional club in the world could not release their players for the for the part that is outside the window so you know that does give us a problem but you know, like I said earlier, we've got a lot of players now playing at a high level that um, that we trust. And Danny's created really great relationships with a lot of clubs. So, you know, it could be that we have to speak to some clubs and, and try to get early release for players. Um, and it might be that we don't get certain players until, you know, the window, which, you know, could be could be difficult. But, yeah, we've got to make sure that we, um, you know, I'm not sure we will. I'm sure we'll have a strong enough squad, whatever, you know, um, players we end up with in that first part of the window to to navigate through that tournament and then you know once the window opens up and yeah we've got the options to bring in whoever we want and, and clubs then can't release players so it's so it's not ideal but um what it what it will create is it is for some players that you know, maybe wouldn't have been in the squad um, which is why it's great the last tours you know and this upcoming I mean, we do have a look at some some of the extended wider group as well because, you know, we're going to need a bigger squad for that qualification tournament. And then if, uh, obviously, if March goes according to plan, then uh, yep. then it's intercontinental playoff time again. Um, and that, that rolls around uh, uh, again. CONCACAF this time. Um, hmm. you know, look, looking, at, looking at CONCACAF, uh, Panama sitting currently in, you know, we're playing the fourth fourth place team obviously Panama currently sitting in that in that slot um, firstly when that when the intercontinental draw came out was that the preferred option to play CONCACAF when you look at the especially when you look at the Asian draw yep. at the moment with the likes of Australia sitting yeah. in that fifth spot and and them yeah. obviously being ranked much higher than say someone like Panama although there's mm. always our bogey team Mexico sitting just above that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think really we were we were hoping for the Asia draw, um, but uh, I'll be honest, we just didn't want Comable. Yeah, um, you know, we didn't want to play one of those teams. So Concacaf or Asia, I think, is a, a good result for us. Um, Australia would have been would have been quite nice. I think that would have been a great game. It would have been um, all on. But uh, yeah, we've ended up with Concacaf. So I think now look at you know we've watched some of those tournament games and you know, we know some of those teams quite well. Um, and obviously, Curacao played Panama, you know, so we did a bit of work on them before uh, that game, and that was a real game. So we, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's going to be a difficult, obviously, game. Once we, we've got to do the job in the qualifiers, but yeah, looking ahead to that, I suppose Concacaf, the, the fourth place team there, 
as long as uh, Mexico, US and Canada hopefully go away and, and finish that top three. Then it will be a Panama or a, a Costa Rica, probably one of those two. Yeah. Um, like you say, though, if one of the big teams sort of drop down a little bit, it, it does become a little bit harder. Yeah, because stylistically, yeah. stylistically, if you look at someone like Panama, Costa Rica, that's not not too dissimilar to what, what we would expect, you know, or what we could come up against. Obviously, Mexico, we've seen they're pretty, fairly yeah. decent. Um, so yeah. I think, but from a from a style perspective, you know, you someone like Panama wouldn't really hold too much too much um, sort of worry for for the for the team. Good side, but not you know outrageous. Yeah. Yeah, I think every, you know, whatever team you come up against are going to have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, if it's a Panama, you know, potentially they'll be a little bit more unpredictable, um, not so structured as a, as a US or a Canada. Um, so, again, it gives you different problems um, and it will be whoever we end up coming up against, we have to make sure that we plan that, that you know, takes away their strengths and, and can really hurt their weaknesses. Um, so it's great that we've had all of these games, you know, recently and, you know, and, and had the Curacao's and the Gambia's and coming up against different styles and different sort of physicalities and different teams, you know, and we'll step up this window with Uzbekistan and Jordan. Um, and then obviously then we've got to navigate the qualifiers. But um, yeah, it's, it is exciting to look ahead and go, there's that um, intercontinental game for the reward if, you can, if we can win these qualifiers as I'm sure some of the Oceania teams are also looking at. But, um, yeah, so it's a great reward. And obviously the reward for winning that game is the World Cup, which, you know, there's no, no bigger competition in the world. And what would it mean? What would it mean for the team, for yourself? Yeah. Well, I, I, like I say, it's the biggest football tournament in the world. And, you know, we're lucky to have players like Winston and Woodsy that have been there. Um, so, you know, each tour, you know, there's, there's talks about what it was like. And, you know, we've got Rory on the staff that has been there and, you know, been in these big games. So, yeah, I think this younger generation have watched these games and seen, you know, the, you know, that team do really well in, in South Africa. Obviously, the 82 World Cup team is there and, you know, they, they want they want to create history, create their own their own sort of um, pathway to, to greatness as well and, and make New Zealand really proud. And realistically, we know uh, and the group know to do that, you have to make the World Cup. You've got to qualify for the World Cup and then and then do well there to to really go to that next level. The um, the intercontinental playoff, just looking at that as a format, have changed it from you know home and away, obviously a COVID initiative from FIFA, um, home and away to a one-off in Qatar. Yep. Positive, negative from from New Zealand's perspective. Uh, I think it's yeah. I mean, there's, there's good and bad. I think potentially a one-off game at a neutral venue potentially gives us a, a like a, not an advantage, but um, you know, the home and away legs historically going away to some of these countries is, is really difficult. Um, and I'm not saying coming to New Zealand isn't difficult, but it's, um, it's sometimes it's really hard to go to a Peru and, and get a result over there. So a one-off game probably does give us a chance, but... It's such a shame that it, you know it's taken away the home game, you yeah. know, for for the the nation, you know, which everybody would want. You know, we, we saw what happened in Bahrain and and even Peru at home, big crowds, excitement, and you know, everybody there and watching. So that's that's been taken away, which is a real shame. And obviously, you know, financially, you can talk about television rights and on all those sort of things. As long as we win that game, as long as we qualify and then we win that one-off game, then it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, mate, of course. Hey, um, just yeah. <laughs> looking back over your, just quickly over your coaching career, you, know, you started with the yeah. New Zealand under-17 team into the under-20s um, and, and yeah. um, then over to Colorado, back to Newcastle Jets and that. But um, yeah. look at, looking at those first, the, the New Zealand um, teams that you coach, the youth sides, how pleasing is it to you? You know, you see some of those players that have that were in that under seventeen team, and now you're dealing with them and coaching them in yeah. the all, in the all white environment. How, how that must be that must be nice to have followed their careers. That's awesome. You know, it, re it really is. Um, you know, and uh, my my first group I was involved with was two thousand and nine under seventeens back in two thousand and nine, um, and you know, and then went through seventeens and and under 20s but 
So there's pretty much everybody in the all white squad or even in the wider environment, you know, at some stage I've coached, uh, which is awesome. You know, the relationships that we have and the same for Danny, you know, Danny's, Danny's coached a lot of these players, you know, through the years, um, through under 17 environments and that, and, you know, it's uh, awesome to see them doing well. We always thought it was a really good cohort, this, this younger group. Um, but you know, I look back to 2017 in the under 20 world cup and we, we played France over in South Korea in one of our group games. Um, and we ended the game with Joe Bell, Sapreet Singh and Callum McCowart playing in midfield. You know, those three, Michael Valton goal. And they were all young players uh, at the time. And they were two years too young for that World Cup. So they were able to do the next World Cup um, as well, the next Under-20 World Cup. And they've had so much international experience and you know that's helped them get into club environments and, and now they're forging professional careers which is which is great you know it's such a shame for the last year's group uh you know that the under 20 under 17 and under 20 cancelled um because of covid and that and it's for new zealand players it's, it's really difficult we don't have a lot of professional opportunities um so going to these World Cups, you know, you have to qualify or, you know, you do have to make sure that you qualify. And that's always, it's difficult. It's not as easy as everybody thinks going to island tournaments at under 17 and under 20 level and qualifying. But historically, we have done that. So New Zealanders over the past what, 10 years have, have had opportunities to go to under 17 World Cups, under 20 World Cups. And they get that on their CV and scouts and clubs around the world see that. And then, you know, they get they get these opportunities. So... Yeah, it's it's really important for the for the younger players that these things happen. And the last two years, that's um, you know tape been taken away. So we've got a whole group now that haven't had that exposure. That you know your Sarpreets and Callums and Eli, and Libby, Michael Val, all of those players, Nando's, you know, Garbinich, all these young players that have been so well had all these experiences, and they've been able to take that on board and, and move forward with their careers. So yeah. Just um, sort of a left field question: By any World Cup fan or not? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think it would be good because it gives us more opportunities to get to a World Cup. Obviously, every two years, uh, and, and my understanding would be a bit expanded as well. So, potentially, it'd be good. Uh, I, I'm still a little bit maybe from the old school of it's so once every four years, and it's a big, big tournament to see it become not overexposed, but you know, you know the more you do something the less sort of important it becomes a little bit like the you know how the champions league ended up going yeah. um but you know i suppose for new zealand you know uh, we have to be selfish and say it'll be a good thing we get to go hopefully more opportunities to go to a world cup financially that's good and we get more games bigger games uh, more regularly which is which is really difficult for for us in new zealand obviously i love when was the last home game fred you'd, you'd know probably yeah. better than me when we last played um south africa i think south africa probably peru probably peru oh, oh yeah intercontinental player yeah, yeah yeah but outside of that yeah. intercontinental yeah probably south africa, south africa. The, the mountain Art game yeah which is what 2014 14 yeah wow it's a long time yeah so it? that's um yeah it's too long it's too yeah. long for the nation to see you know the all whites play at home um, yeah but it's really difficult. You, you so financially, it's so hard to get countries to come to this part of the world. It's you know we're we're a long way away from anywhere. So. Well, you got to pay for two teams, don't you? Yeah. We've got to bring yeah, everyone. We've got to bring thing. our team back and their team back. I know. So. Yeah, that's true. The good thing for us now is really most of the time now when we actually leave to travel to games, it's just the staff. Yeah. That are leaving, and we've even got staff that are not here now. <laughs> Um, so, you know, all our players, if we play in UAE and Dubai and Abu Dhabi, you know, for the players, most of them are five, six hour travel, you know, to get to that game, mm. bring them back to New Zealand. It's obviously, you know, big, big journeys. Um, but I think everybody is crying out for, for home games. The players would love to play at home and, you know, I'm sure the fans would, would love to see the All-Whites play. Well, Darren, thanks so much for your time. Uh, all the best for the games against Jordan and Uzbekistan. Hope, uh, hope MIQ treats you well if, yeah, if well, nothing, we've, we've nothing happens. We've got MIQ this time. We've already, um, we've already got our lottery <laughs> tickets this time. So this is great. Nah, that, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, so all, the, all the best for the, for the window and obviously yeah. for the March qualifiers as well. Awesome. Thanks, Fred. Great. Well, that's all we've got time for. Um, you know, exciting times coming up for the All Whites. Uh, plenty of other football on this, uh, this later on this week as well with the Phoenix, the, the men up against West United. 
Friday night at 9.45. And leading into that game, um, the Phoenix woman up against Adelaide. You'll need two screens for this one because there is slight overlap in the games um, due to COVID and the scheduling that they've had to do. So the woman kicking off at 8.35, men kicking off at 9.45. But uh, all the best for the rest of the week and enjoy your football.